Okay. I think we are situated here. I'm trying to do this so it's easier and so then you guys can see it, but I'm going to, I'll just do this. I'm going to paint our dining, or not dining room, our coffee table that goes in our living room again. So I found this at a yard sale years ago. I think it was $10. Um, it's solid wood. It's, I liked the circular shape. The size is perfect. And when I got it home, I did the quickest like paint job on it. And so it wasn't, it wasn't ever great. And I have been trying this new paint color. And so I want to paint it in that color. This may not work. <laughs> so I have it up on the dining room table. So it goes in the living room there. So you guys can kind of see the living room. And um, I just kind of wanted to share some tips here. I'm trying to move this. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. You can see some of it. So we can just share this part of it. I just thought it would be easier than being on the floor. Um, so, okay. So the first thing I did was I had tons of brush, brush strokes on this coffee table when I first painted it. I'm in my paint shirt because if not, my other clothes will get paint on them. Um, and I had a ton of brush strokes on it. And so I needed to get it smooth. And I just, I just recently got a um, serve prep sander. You guys, I was sanding in my living room yesterday with this thing. It hooks up to your shop vac. I'm still kind of getting a feel for it, so I will definitely share it when I feel a little more confident in it, but I'm just in my living room when it's hot, raining, or whatever, and can sand because it hooks up to your shop vac and it takes all the dust in, inside there, so it's pretty awesome. Um, and so it got this really, really, really smooth. So like I said, this has already been painted, and you can see I kind of got down to the wood in some areas, not a big deal because it's going to be painted over. Um, so since this has been painted already once, that's going to be kind of like my primer coat. Um, so this project's going to be different than if it wasn't painted already. Uh, so the steps I'm taking with this one is, is totally different. But you definitely, I get a lot of questions on how you get rid of um, brush strokes. So first off, start with a smooth surface. So I am... I did all that sanding, like I said, and so this is totally smooth now. And then there's another little trick you can use to get rid of brush strokes as you're painting. But I have been using the Wise Owl paint, and I shared a couple of projects with this color. Is that backwards for you guys? It's Restoration. It's so pretty. So it's very similar to this color, but a little bit different. So I'm going to paint it in this color. And then just get, a, I've been waiting to do this and just wanting to do this forever. And um, it, I'm finally doing it. I want to get it done. <laughs> so I got rid of all of the brush strokes that were on here. Cause I really, like I said, I just did a fast paint job because I wanted it to be done. And I was taking photos for something and this was years ago and it's been like that since. So um, definitely when you're painting with, you guys, can you see this? If you're here and can see me, let me know. Say hello. Tell me where you're coming in from. Today, you guys, it's like fall here in Iowa. All the windows are open. I shut these because there was a dog barking, but all the windows are open. I've been in a sweatshirt and it's like sweats all day. It's so amazing. We had um, some rain come through finally last night and uh, it brought in some cool weather. So that makes me super happy. I think it's supposed to be kind of nice all week. Okay, side note. Okay, so it, when you're working with chalk paints and um, chalk mineral paints, there's, there's, there's different chalk paints. But a lot of the times they are, am I going to be able to do this? They're kind of thick. And so this one isn't horrible. I can see here that it's not, you guys can see that. It's not horrible. But one thing you need to invest in if you are going to be painting furniture is a continuous spray bottle. You guys, this... This is the trick to not getting brush strokes. So, um, so one thing I do is I can, I don't like to, which you can do this totally. You can totally just spray where you're going to be painting or just kind of lightly mist. And I would never really do this over where I've been painting, but for you guys, and since this is just kind of lightly mist your paintbrush, <laughs> I got it on the paint too. And, um, or the area where you're painting. And it just kind of helps move 
the paint a little better because like I said, if it's super thick, you are going to get brush strokes for sure. So uh, definitely I put some old towels on our dining room table. Um, so if you can see it just because and one other thing, why does my phone go dark when I do this? Um, another thing when you are pushing paint or you don't, you don't have enough paint on your uh, like brush and then you keep going over it, you're just going to tear paint off and that will leave you brush strokes as well. So you definitely want to put enough product paint on your brush, but once you feel like it's pulling, that means you need more paint. You, you definitely don't want to keep pulling that and see like right there, I can tell it's just getting a little bit. Yep, you guys can see that. I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint, or water, gosh, paint, um, right there where I was because it just gets, if, you, if you're painting a lot, you'll kind of know the feeling. It just feels uh, kind of thick or like you're pulling. It's not really going on easy. It should just glide like this. But sometimes, like I said, if it's too thick, it will definitely, um, so here, can you guys see this? Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Okay, right here, can you see that? So this is what happens, it's super thick. I just put a big glob on there. Obviously that's not how you're gonna normally paint, but when it's super thick like this, and it'll come, some of them will come right out of the can like that. And sometimes when I open, my phone keeps going dark. Uh, sometimes when I open a can of paint, uh, it, it'll just be thicker, you know, like it's not a brand new can of paint. It's just thicker just from sitting. Um, so definitely the water helps so much. And if you see brush strokes, just add a little, I'm just squirting my paintbrush underneath the table here. Just add a little water to the paintbrush. Like I said, you can just spray, and I did, you can just spray on the area that needs a little bit of water. You're just trying to thin it out a bit and it just helps, um, the water just acts as a, I don't wanna say, kind of like a, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it just helps it glide. See right here, I can tell that that's, and this first coat never, your first coat is not gonna look good even over a painted piece in a very similar color. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can tell the different colors, but um, this is kind of more, pulls more gray, I would say, and this pulls more beige, kind of. Um, but uh, your first coat's never gonna look great. <laughs> so don't stop at your first coat. Even, like I said, even over a color that uh, looks very similar and should cover perfectly. I can totally tell already that this will need um, another coat. So, and here I'm just adding water here to this area where I can see brush strokes and where it was just kind of thick. So the water, and I would say get a continuous, if anybody needs a link, I can, they're really inexpensive at, uh, on Amazon but a continuous spray bottle. So they're, they're the ones that, I'm not gonna do it here, but if you push this in, the water continues. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it's not like a spray bottle where it just squirts it on there. The continuous one kind of gives a uh, more fine mist and that's what you want. Cause the other ones will just, just squirt the water out and not really, not really help you in, um, in any, not, not what you want. And another thing is when you are painting something, sorry you guys, I don't know what's going on. Um, when you're painting something and as it's drying, try not to go over the paint as it's drying because again, you're gonna be pulling paint off. You'll get chunks and you'll get, um, uh, you'll get brush strokes just because it's drying and it's, so don't, don't paint over where it's trying to dry. Don't add another coat until it's, uh, fully, fully, fully dried. 
The Serve Prep Sander that I used on this, uh, definitely you can check them out for pricing and all of that. There's different, um, there's, there's different options and, but I mean, it was just so nice to be sitting out, sitting here and, and being able to, here, I'm gonna, I only have a little bit to go on my table, otherwise you guys are going over, <laughs> overboard. So, um, but anyway, they have different options with the sanding, the sanding pads that, that they have with it. Uh, it's definitely, it's so much quieter than my, I, I, than like an orbital sander. And it's, like I said, I will definitely be sharing it more as I get, I'm learning it. There's a learning curve. <laughs> so, uh, I just got, if you guys saw my, um, reels this weekend or my stories um I got a dresser that I really don't want to paint the top or paint the fronts but the top I'm definitely going to need to sand it's like somebody uh put like a piece of paper on there and then it got wet so it's kind of and then they pulled it off and it kind of left the white paper on it but it's it's like smooth it's like part of the surface now so I'm definitely going to have to sand that um, so I will use that sander on that and see how it does. I wish I could move this and keep going. <clears throat> this is real life, right? So hopefully this does not fall down. I have one kid home right now. Oh, one kid home right now that kind of helped me. But so do you guys... Do you, have you painted furniture? Do you have painted pieces in your house? Um, are you scared to paint furniture? Let me go down one more. I know I get a lot of messages from people that will say, uh, I've got, you know, I've got a dresser and I know, oh, they are perfect. Look at this. Um, they'll say something like, I've got a dresser or I've got a buffet or something and I know I would like it a lot better if I painted it but you're worried about painting it. And so I always tell those people, it's living in your house. That has actually happened to me before. I actually, I picked up, I think I've told this story before, but an Ethan Allen coffee table at a yard sale years ago. I mean, again, I think it was $15. I did not pay an Ethan Allen price. And I just, I didn't, I never liked the color, but people kept telling me, oh my gosh, you cannot paint an Ethan Allen piece. Uh, but I did and I loved it so much more and it's it's a great piece of furniture I mean it's it's built to last but it's just so much better painted and I it's a piece that I probably will never get rid of um because it's just such a sturdy piece of furniture the kids have danced on it sat on it you know stand on it I mean not so much anymore but so it's been through the test of times but I painted it so I just want to encourage people it's just paint if it's not like this i would never paint like a you know expensive antique or you know spend twelve hundred dollars on an expensive antique dresser and then paint it i would never do anything like that but if you've got a dresser in your home or a buffet or a side table whatever it is an end table that you know you would like you just want to paint it. You know, it'd be, you'd love it if it was painted white or it was painted blue or whatever it is. Paint it, paint it. You have to live with it. You, sorry. You will like it that much better in your home. And these pieces, like I said, I'm always rescuing pieces even if I don't, we don't have room for it. I will rescue it and sell it just because I know there's still so much potential in these pieces. So you can't really tell there's a difference, but they're definitely, maybe you can there. It definitely is a different color. And this, this table needed it. So without having to move you guys around so much, and let me just go through these questions. Is there, if there's questions, um, Let me see. Rainy, Louisiana. Hello, Illinois. 
Hello, Hannah. Whoops. Okay, and why is this? <laughs> I've been wanting to paint my AP, my piano for a while now, but I'm scared to start. Okay, can I just ask you, is it Dishpan Hands? Oh my gosh, I love your name. I love your name. Tell me, uh, tell me why you're scared to even start. Definitely painting, like painting a piano too. Oh, you guys can kind of see this stool I got at a, at a yard sale this weekend. It's so good. It's green. It was from like a medical office. Um, definitely painting. It's, it's not a, it's not a quick job. I mean, depending on what you're doing, I've got tons of small little tables that I, you know, that I've painted. You can get those done in a couple hours. A piano would be a lot more, but what scares you about it? I would love to know. A I've seen so many, uh, really pretty piano pianos painted and didn't Joanna Gaines have a was it a, I can't remember, she found, I think it was a green one or something in one of the houses she did and she put it in her home. Definitely pretty. I would love to know though, what scares you from starting? Name of paint and color. Yes, I will let you know. Okay, so the, it's Wise Owl Paint. Let me hold it up. Um, and it's in, so I'm really just loving the Grayish and the beige colors, and it's called Restoration. I did a, a, I can't remember if it was, was it an end table? I'm sure I came on here and shared it with you guys, but um, in this color, it's just, it's just so pretty. I think it was an end table. Because I'm not sure if I'll like it there afterwards. I painted a china hutch, so I'm not sure why. Okay, so you're just, so is it just like the color you mean? You're not sure if you'll... Yeah, that's the thing. If if you're not even sure about the piece where it's at, that's a different story. But I thought you meant maybe painting. So and if you've painted a china hutch, you kind of know. But I do understand too when people say it's just a lot of work. I mean, definitely it's not, uh, you know, depending on the piece, like I said, but it takes some work. But like this one, I'll have this done this afternoon. When I hop off here with you guys, um, I'll just get the first coat on and then wait for it to dry. Wait for it to fully dry between coats. Um, I can take you guys along with me. Uh, before you add any other coats, make sure it's fully dry. Just because, again, you will be pulling paint off if, if you don't do that. And I am not going to paint the underside, underside of this. You're not going to see it. Um, especially, you know, for our house, I'm not going to paint that. Sometimes when I, that's another question I get. Sometimes when I am selling, it depends on the piece. I guess I should say that. It, it, it definitely depends on the piece. So yeah, okay, I wanted to share this with you guys. This is your friend, if you, a continuous spray bottle, if you are ever painting furniture. It, um, it just, it makes a huge dis difference, especially when you're brushing, because it'll get rid of your brush strokes uh, that we all get when we're painting, just because the paint's too thick. It just needs a, is it a catalyst? Is that the word? That just to help it thin out and, and move across the table or whatever your piece is a little bit better. So I'm gonna hop off, finish this. And if you have any questions, if you're watching on replay, let me know, hashtag replay. If you have any other questions, let me know. I will definitely be in to answer them. But I'm gonna finally get this table done. So thanks for being here, guys. I will check in with you guys later.